Bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 bing. Wow. Hi, everyone. It's Danny here, and welcome back to another new video. And also, I haven't been posting videos for four weeks or so because revising for exam from July, the end of July to now, I have examinations. So, yeah. And I think this is also an unlabeled healthier thermoelectric module. So, I'm technically not quite sure which one is the full side. Okay, so now I'm just gonna plug in a lithium ion battery right here minus and plus c okay whoa this side gets hot so we're just gonna use a red marker to label this as the hot side okay so you can see i label a mini h there that's introduced due to our friend the heat sink and the thermal compound right here unfortunately they they don't give quite a lot of the thermal compound, but that's fine. We don't need such huge amount of thermal compound. But now we are gonna clean it up so that the thermal compound will stick into the stick onto the aluminium. You might ask, how does this Peltier work? Simple. So basically, inside this Peltier module, there are many couples of P and N junctions. So basically, if you apply an electric current to one side of the junction, one side of the junction may get hot and whereas the other side of the junction may get cold. So basically this is like a reverse of a Seebeck effect, which means that electric current is produced when temperature difference is present between the couples. Whereas this Peltier effect basically means that when you apply electricity to the Peltier, it will generate a temperature difference across the both sides of the junction. You can see the thermal grease right here. Just gonna take a little bit on the big heatsink. Put the hot side. If you did it wrongly, then that should be fine. You just have to change the polarity. Okay, so once you're done, you're supposed to grab this small heatsink and put the thermal base onto the top of the peltier and use all of them because you have this last bit which can just be used for the cook side. Okay, now we have to put the heatsink like this. So now grab your large screw and secure the thermal electric peltier onto it. Be sure to not take out the heat sink or the peltier once you have set the glue in or the paste in or else the paste will not work as efficient as before. Now the difficult part is to shift this thing downwards. So you can get a tweezer like this. Basically just put your screw. Some of you might have realized when as I was building this, I haven't installed the two fans on the heat sinks yet. So these are the two fans right here. This is the large fan which has a dimension of 90 by 90 millimeters, and this is the small fan with a dimension of 40 by 40 millimeters. So now we are gonna install the small fan with the side, with the adjust side, which is this side right here facing up so basically the air is going to enter in like this and go out from the fan like this okay so now i'm going to install in this orientation so that the fan wire could actually go like this the peltier wire is going to go like this nevertheless instead of three screws i want to use two screws because it seems to be balanced out awesome right awesome isn't it Now I'm going to install this fan with the adjust side the same direction as that of the fan, like this. But since the wire is blocking the fan, the wire is blocking the fan, we just we can just install like this. And then you can see that it even mounted this L-shaped thing for you. Awesome. So now get your grill in order to prevent accidental injury. You're gonna, now going to install the fan like this. Okay, so with the grill, with the parabola of the grill facing up, which is that curved line there, we can now screw in a very large screw. Okay, so right now I have finally installed all the screws of the fan and now I'm just gonna go to the building of this thing 
right here. Okay, so how do we, how are we supposed to glue this thing to each other? You might ask. Well, the main thing is we could use a polypropylene safe glue or even better, we could just use a hot glue gun instead. It's much better, it's much cheaper and safer compared to glues with different chemicals which often sometimes are quite carcinogenic if you breathe in too much. So hot glue will be the best idea, but please do not overheat the hot glue or else you will leach the poisonous chemicals as well. Okay, so once you have finished gluing all your foam to all together, insert the wires of the fan into the foam until it reaches out from the back end of the foam where the thermoelectric peltier is being placed at. Okay, so you might have to every once in a while take the fan out of the thermoelectric air cooler in order to clean out all the dust that is accumulated inside the foam after continuous usage for a long period of time. After moments of ideation from the things that I can find at my home, I've came up with a very easy method to use. At the back of the cooler, you can see that I've attached the Greek letter alphabet theta, which I made from a tape, electrical tape, in conjunction with seven balsa wood, each a thickness of 0.25 centimeters to create a height of around 1.8 cm if I rounded, rounded it up so that the outside wood could create a layer for the thermoelectric cooler fan to fit in perfectly with the to the opening that I've made. The next step that we have to do is to cut out a polypropylene container cover to shape so that it fits the heat sink. So basically the purpose of this is to prevent thermal energy transfer from the hot to cold side. Oh gosh, seems like my polypropylene cover is too big. So in order to decrease the size of the cover, I will have to use a permanent marker and draw a simple doodle of the heat sink, the large heat sink on the cover and I can use a scissor to cut the cover into a smaller piece. Once our transparent cover has been cut into a smaller piece, you can see that it now fits the heat sink perfectly and also aligns itself with the screws of the sport heat sink. But however, as you can see, the wires are occasionally being scratched by the large. The wires of the fan, the thermoelectric cooler, are being scratched by the sharp edges of our polypropylene cutout. So in that case, to prevent any scratching of the small wires and exposing the contacts, I would have to draw the wires out of the polypropylene cutout and hot glue the polypropylene itself onto the foam sandwich between the two large and small heat sinks. Once you have hot glue your transparent polypropylene thingy, you can now finally secure your titter and the entire peltier module, the heat sinks and the fan itself onto the cutout onto the seven balsa wood that you have made at the previous part and you're gonna mount it securely like this. You might have to gently press down on the bottom side of the titter for the glue to cure strongly to the balsa wood so that the titter and the balsa wood will stick tightly together and securely. So right here at, on my hands I have this PWM speed controller to control the cooling fan at the furthermost left hand side of the Peltier the air conditioner module which is basically the air that we are getting out the, the cold air that we are supposedly gonna get out so basically this is gonna control how strong is the fan okay last but not least you have come to the last step of your thermoelectric cooler building which is also one of the toughest steps to do and that is none other than the wiring i have to spend a little bit of the time trying to complete the wiring process however don't fret I've drawn a schematic for you to build your own thermoelectric cooler as well. But however, I do recommend you to add more mole molecules modules for better cooling efficacy. So now, let's flash the schematic on the screen while I'm completing my circuit. Mm -hmm.